All right, living room, home theater tour for mid-2022. Let's do a whole update overview. So I have two entertainment spaces, home theater entertainment spaces, AV setups in my house. I have my living room set up as one area, one zone, and then I've got the dedicated theater room. I already did the dedicated theater room tour update for mid-2022, so check that out in the pop-up above. But right now, the living room's been overhauled quite a bit with new devices, new tech, new stuff in it. So let's take a look through the whole, the whole of the living room, the whole of the setup. All right, so when I did this house originally, we custom architected, custom built all of that, this home, several years ago. I didn't have a dedicated theater. The living room was set up to be the total home theater AV entertainment space. Um, it was originally a 7.2.4 setup. But I've pulled back from that, changed a number of things when I did the dedicated room that kind of led us to where we are today, along with more furnishings and other things that are in here since I started the channel roughly about a year ago from recording this one. So I'll start off by basically saying, of course, we're on the main floor of our home. You can see through the windows there, the backyard and some of the side yard. This room is on the order of 18 by 17, and we are actually directly above the dedicated theater. And the storage room where all the gear is, is kind of down relatively close to where I'm standing right now. We do have nine foot ceilings throughout the house, so it's kind of a nice, open, spacious space. We did all of the AV television speakers and that here on the, this back wall of the house, the front wall of the room. Custom designed this bump out, so that's framed into the room, of course, deep enough to hold a fairly large television, nice and clean and flush with the, the in-wall speakers and subs on either side of it. Currently hanging in here, that is an LG G2 83 inch. That cubby will support up to about a 97 inch, 98 inch TV in size. Hopefully someday, hopefully someday we'll have a, a, a be filling that cubby to its extreme. On the left and the right there is a pair, a pair of Focal 1000 series IW LCR 6s. And below them with the black covers is a pair of Triad bronze subs work awesome together it's all driven with some parasound amplifiers and an anthem str towards the end of this video i will go down and go over the rack setup and the source equipment and that that kind of feeds the room but i'm just running 2.2 audio in here no immersive channels up above no surround channels i've got the dedicated theater for that quite honestly i think this is the sweet spot for a living room setup nice and clean and integrated Someday I'll probably paint those grills or get them painted. I need to find some kind of an auto shop or a body paint shop that can do it really well properly so I don't end up spraying, filling, filling holes and filling gaps in those speaker covers, get them blackened up. We do have this room now pretty fully furnished. The, the swivel chair over there in the corner. We've got the big suctional couch where we sit to play games, watch TV, and occasionally watch some movies, documentaries that sort of stuff in here, plenty of room for the family. Coffee table, which I do use for some storage. I keep some remote controls, I keep some video game controllers in that, nice and easily accessible uh, in those drawers. You can see I've got a couple things out here. Primarily in this room we're using an Apple TV, but I do have access to my Kaleidoscape and I have access to all the gaming systems that are part of my setup right now, which is effectively everything. Gaming PC, Switch, PlayStation 5, and Xbox, but I will be diminishing and pulling that back in the not too distant future. This TV is just amazing. It looks awesome. I've been having a lot of problems with the control integration. This room does have a control four kind of setup to it, and it's not, the TV isn't working very well, has not worked very well with that. Still trying to get that, get that fixed. I think we're waiting on some LG firmware updates. No acoustical treatments in here, but we did insulate the house very strongly, including between the floors in the interior walls. So it's, it's anchored quite nicely. Of course, this room is open. It does open up on the left wall to our dining and kitchen area. However, you know, we've got a nice big plush rug with some big thick pad. We've got the nice big couch absorbing a lot of sound. And if you wanted diffusion, we have diffusion. We made the back wall here uh, entirely these custom like built-in bookcases. We really value reading in our house. Everybody in the household reads a lot. And so, you know, those books, those bookcases, couldn't ask for better diffusion, I think, across an entire back wall. 
uh, deep cubbies, books of all different shapes and sizes and board games and all the other stuff. Got an opening over here that goes down the hallway to our foyer. And then again, there's the big opening to our dining room and kitchen. Now the TV is mounted on an articulating swivel mount. So if I pull it out enough to get a peek behind it, I do have some bias lighting. I kind of go back and forth on using it versus not using it. I have it off currently. I haven't really been using it lately. And then I do wall mount sources uh, behind the screen here. I've got an Apple TV and our Nintendo Switch both up in this room directly connected to the television. You can see that white kind of box area. That's the, the cable service area. There's four ethernet ports, power plug there. And that's where I pull all of my wires through from my rack down in the basement. Those light green cables are a couple of RUI Pro 40 foot HDMI 2.1 cables. One of them comes through my AVM70 for the theater, which gives me the zone two switching capability. And the other one is actually dedicated to the PC because that gaming PC 3090 Ti is capable of running full, full 48 gigabit HDMI 2.1, 4K 120 with G-Sync, of course, and the TV supports it. Just awesome. So I did my best to clean this area up back here uh, with wiring and all of that as I can. I do a little, I have a little IR extender down there under the TV. Might be a little hard to see. Just a receiver for controlling volume of the STR when I use the Apple TV remote. I did mention this is a Control 4 setup. There's a Control 4 Neo. Quite honestly, I don't use the Neo all that much in here. I tend to use the Apple TV remote more, unless I'm maybe using the Kaleidoscape or something else and I need the Neo. But I prefer to use the Apple TV remote when we leverage the Apple TV in this space so much. And so I ran the IR extension to be able to use the Apple TV remote and control volume of the Anthem. Because I don't have an HDMI connection between the TV and the STR. The STR doesn't have HDMI ports. So you can't use CEC to control volume. I basically have an optical, a 40-ish foot uh, digital audio optical cable coming out of the TV through the walls, pulled in the same path that those two long green HDMI 2.1 cables run, and then that inputs to the Anthem STR. So when I don't take the Neo out, I do have Control 4 panels. All of our lighting, all kinds of different stuff is on our Control 4 system. And so we've got a six button custom panel here. You can see there's buttons for watch TV and play games. So one tap a watch TV, everything turns on and we've got the Apple TV. A double tap on watch TV gets me to the Kaleidoscape switched through the AVM 70 in the zone two and then play games, you know, one tap for the switch, double tap for the PC. And then with the control four program and I actually have a triple tap, you can't do a quadruple tap but you can do a triple. And so I have that programmed to basically the first triple tap takes me to the PlayStation 5. And then if you're on the PlayStation 5 and you triple tap again, you get the Xbox and it switches back and forth and vice versa. I really like this space. We're sitting about 14-ish feet or so back from that 83 inch television. One other thing to show, we've got this hallway closet in the hall, that front hall just off the living room and if I open this up I keep a lot of my supporting things in here of course kids toys and all of that finds its way in here some more board games as well but I've got one shelf dedicated to things for gaming things for the living room got all of these universal controller chargers sitting in here one two three four five of them dual controller chargers so that's all the controllers for the Xbox the switch the PlayStation 5 I got some fight sticks back there and then this is where we leave our Control 4 Neo remote to charge. Very easy, accessible, close to the room, you know, but hidden away. All right, so we're down here in the storage room. This is my equipment rack. Same rack serves all of the elements of my home theater. That also serves the living room. Some things are shared, zone one, zone two. At the top, that's Gaming Central up there, the 3090 Ti gaming PC, the big case on the left, PlayStation 5, Xbox. All of those down here, out of the way, again, to the living room. I do most of my gaming really on that computer, and I don't have to see it. I don't have to hear it. I can crank up the fans. It's in the basement. Runs nice and cool. Got my 8-bay Synology there, loaded with personal files and, and all of that, but also a variety of physical media rips, able to play on the Apple TV through Infuse. In the living room works great. Of course, the Kaleidoscape. 
accessible in the living room through the Zone 2. So the Kaleidoscape, the PlayStation 5, and the Xbox are really what I take, really what I access in the living room through the AVM70, through the home theater Zone 2, whereas again, the, the PC and then the Apple TV and the Switch upstairs are all directly connected to the LG television. Here's my audio section for the living room, that Anthem STR. I just love this thing. Got it used uh, off of AVS Forum. Works great, sounds awesome. Gives me Anthem Arc room correction capability in the living room. That's what I really wanted. Just, just aces, love the Anthem stuff. Underneath that are a couple of Triad Rack Amp 300s. Those are the amplifiers for the subwoofers in the living room. So they're passive subwoofers in the wall and they have rack amps down here that drive them. Makes it really easy. A lot of in-wall subwoofers are set up that way. We'll skip over that. That's the Anthem AVM70 for the home theater uh, and then a stack of Parasound amps. So the way that I've got the living room speakers set up, I'm running the left channel, the left Focal 1000 in the living room off of one of the channels of the top uh, Parasound A52 Plus and the right Focal speaker in the living room is driven off of one of the channels of the Parasound, the A52 Plus on the bottom. I have 13 channels of amplification between these three Parasound amps, but I only use 11 in the theater. So I took the couple of free channels and put them, put them to work in the living room. So I've got a little bit of a complex like switching turn on structure here. Control 4 helps with that because if I turn on the living room, I need certain amps on. If I turn on the theater, I need certain amps on, but it's all taken care of by Control 4. EA5 drives the whole house, one controller, all I need, takes care of the entire house, all the zones. We've got some Control 4 audio there distributed around, and then at the bottom, CyberPower UPS. And note that the, the plug from the living room actually runs down here to the rack. So any, the television itself, in anything plugged in behind the television, it's not a separate circuit. I have a 20 amp dedicated circuit basically serving this rack, and so the TV, and, and the sources and stuff plugged in up there are part of that same circuit with the extended wall plug that wires behind the rack, comes out, and then plugs into the cyber power. It's a 1500 watt UPS, uh, no problem running the TV on it and all the sources and the other stuff. We'll see if at some point in time I might need to take the TV off of it is maybe when the 4000 series GPUs come out and the PC starts sucking more energy, or maybe I need to get two of them or, or up them but for now, that, that one cyber power does a lot of work. So what's next for the living room entertainment setup? Quite honestly, not a whole lot. I did a lot of things in this calendar year up here. The Focals are new. The Anthem is new. The Parasounds are new. I don't really need more in terms of sources. I'm actually trying to kind of eliminate sources. But I will be setting up some more local media to take advantage of being able to access higher quality stuff easily and natively right on the Apple TV using Infuse. I think, of course, I'll be buying a 4090, a 4090 Ti, whatever, top NVIDIA card puts out this fall to upgrade from the 3090. Can't wait for that. There's going to be so much more power packed in, busting out the full 4K 120 maxed out settings and all of that in just about every game. Hopefully, we'll see a new Apple TV this year. Definitely, we'll be buying that day one. And then the one thing that I might actually really consider is picking up a dedicated amplifier for these two speakers and kind of moving the channels off of the Parasound A52 Pluses. I'm really loving the integration between Focal, Parasound, and Anthem. And so I would stick with that level of performance and consistency. So we'll see, maybe looking at like an A21, A23 Plus level amplifier from Parasound at just a two channel to drive these speakers. It would have let me simplify the triggering setup quite a bit. The Anthem STR would be able to trigger the three dedicated amps for the living room. The AVM70 would trigger the three dedicated amps for the theater, and I wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have the crossover. We'll see as well how I... Oh, Tech Enthusiasm Colors, excellent job, LG. I love that background. We'll see as well when the HDMI 2.1 upgrade comes for the AVM70. Once I'm able to get that board in there, who knows, I might go ahead and kind of return to a full Zone 2 setup of running all the sources through the AVM70 and switching them there up to the living room. But for now, particularly with the PC, can't do it. I need that full 48 gigabit HDMI 2.1 connection. There you go. If you have any questions about this room, if there's something that I can talk more about, break down, let me know, post in the comments, ask away. Check out the other videos on the channel where I've talked about a number of things and a number of elements in more detail. 
about how I've done certain stuff, how I've wired things, how I've changed it and evolved it over time. I'm always tinkering. And do take a look. They'll be popping up in a second here. The link to the full dedicated home theater mid-2022 updated tour where I go into detail all about that space and what's in it and how I put it together. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Look down in the description for a bunch of ways to support the channel and come on back for more home theater fun. Thanks.